violence out of the drug trade, among other things. Yeah, he was very he he thought the war on drugs was a total disaster and that this was the one stop shop to fix it. And and I think when you look through the catalogs now of all his online correspondence behind the names, it's it's pretty clear that to me and we're talk we're talking about DPR who ended up being Ross Ulbrich. We'll we'll talk about how that went down and everything. But Ross was a guy who I think from behind the keyboard started to feel the power of the movement itself and let that affect his actions because he wasn't a guy this was not a guy out there buying Lamborghinis or anything like that. He lived Absolutely. a very simple life. He wasn't he wasn't this like just doing it for his own fame type guy, but the movement, the political ideology of radical libertarianism in this case really overtook him and drove an incredible innovation, but also led him to slip up and get caught. I, th I would say, I mean, I feel bad saying this because just like, just to set the context here, Ross Ulbricht is like serving life in, in prison yes. now and no parole. I have, without parole, two life sentences, I think. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, he is in a, uh, a vulnerable position. He can't truly like speak for himself. But I do think it's so. I feel bad like saying um, critical things about him, but just you have to tell this story properly. I think that he was eventually, we'll get to this, I guess, kind yes. of corrupted in his ideals. And I think eventually he was not just doing stuff out of um, libertarian and I idealistic motivation. He was, he had become. Uh, sort of enamored of the power and the millions of dollars flowing like through, you know, around his invention mm. and did some, you know, nasty things to try to protect that. But but it, it definitely, there's no question that it started from a, a, a place of, of idealism and he uh, had rules for the Silk Road that you could only buy and sell things that he considered to be victimless crimes. You know, there was no child pornography child what we now call like child sexual abuse materials there were there was no murder for hire although that's a story that the media has told endlessly uh, the silk road did not have like assassination services for sale there were at some points weapons for sale i mean uh the dread pirate roberts believed i think that like you know guns can be used for self-defense and but there were limits in that he had, he like disallowed any weapon that could be used on like large groups of people for instance like he didn't mm. i think once obviously to become like a, a a hub for terrorism um and eventually he shut down even the gun sales because it wasn't really working very well i think it's a lot harder to send a gun through the mail yeah i could imagine i feel like that yeah. one they they can find through metal metal detectors pretty easy right but but there were you know this this notion of like victimless crime um was real on the silk road there were hacking tools that were sold eventually um, but the rules were that those were not supposed to be sold. And it, I, the, eventually the government pointed to those um, as examples of like, you know, exceptions to this victimless crime rule. Mm. And I don't really know what, how that happened. I think that in, in part the site just grew so big that, um, or I don't know. I mean, even that is like selling hacking tools was a, a very small part of the Silk mm. Road's business. And for a very long time, like <clears throat> even... The drug sales, it's important to point out, um, most of it was not like heroin, right? Uh, was not cocaine even. It was like- Mushrooms, it was acid. A lot of ecstasy. Yeah, ecstasy. Ecstasy was like a major product on there, in part because the quality of it could be guaranteed, which is always like, I, you know, I think been a challenge with mm -hmm. MDMA. So um, there was like a, when, when you looked at the Silk Road in 2011, 2012, it really did seem like a super interesting and ethically complicated place, you know, like um, not a, just a, not a drug cartel or a criminal operation, you know, in a simple way like that. Definitely violating all international law for sure. But And people bought heroin and died from yes. the Silk Road. It, there's no doubt that it, it expanded the drug trade probably in ways that like, um, there were stories of people who had gone clean, but then, and then moved someplace where like drugs were not very accessible. But then when they saw the Silk Road, mm. they couldn't resist the temptation. Yeah, and you know, uh, like you know, drugs are uh, morally complicated. Yes, they but are. um, but but I I just always want to like uh, 
tell the story of the Silk Road in this way that doesn't just make it sound like um, uh, like R Ross Ulbricht, like the Dread Pirate Roberts was Scarface or something. Yeah, yeah. so my, my stance on this, and you and I have talked about this before a little bit off air, but and I've talked about it on some other podcasts back in the day earlier on when we were doing these. I, I think there were two podcasts in particular where it got covered a bunch. But, you know, when people were talking about like the pardon with Ross because – his sentence was insane, what he was given. His sen his crime did not fit the sentence at all. But when people are talking about pardon, I've always backed off that and said, listen, I don't think the guy's necessarily a bad guy. And I, I think there's a lot of amazing innovation he had. But you can't violate every international law on drugs and some other things and not be punished for that. But I, I've always – Therefore, looked at like commutation as as a route with with his sentence, which we'll see what happens there. But you know, I don't think that I think the world can get really complicated, and you can see people innovate ahead of where governments are, and perhaps then not perhaps in this case, one hundred percent inject their political ideology into it in a way that's radical. Let's call it what it is. But I also think that. The way that they painted him out to be was far beyond the scope of what he was. For one thing, I feel pretty confident based on the evidence that he was in over his head pretty quickly and that it's very, very – to me, I, I fully believe, but I think from an evidence perspective, it is, it is very easy to make the case, at least I'll say, that there were multiple Dread Pirate Roberts, multiple people using that account. And so there's no doubt that some of the correspondence that happened on that account from behind the keyboard online was questionable to say the least and morally awful in, in some cases as, as it got to with calling hits on people and things like that. But I think it – I think things do change when you're doing things online. It doesn't make anything right but to me – just looking at it from a humanity perspective, I mean, we see people on Twitter, right? People on Twitter will say things that you can meet these people in person and then they're like kind of nice or like they're not like that or they'd never say it like that. And it's just this thing where you feel real confident behind a keyboard being able to say do this or I think this or I think that. And there's definitely a part of me that thinks a lot of that happened with, with Ross and even some of the other guys who were operating behind that keyboard there to where if some of the other guys were, were putting hits on people or whatever and some people have accused Ross of that. He's denied that a lot and the government did not bring those charges at trial. But you know, if, if that were the case, I, I don't view it as the same capabilities of, of someone who's sitting here in a room and says, go hit that guy. You know what I mean? There, there's more of an emotional disconnection, and that's also their fault for setting up a system to where that that is possible to happen. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.